Well, my friends, we might have a new title holder for the best 135 scale armor kit available on the market today. Yes, you heard that right. We are of course talking about Tamiya's brand new 2022 release of their M18 Hellcat Tank Destroyer. I just finished building this kit and it's pretty damn near perfect. So whether you're doing a little research at home because you're considering picking this up or maybe you already got one and you wanna build alongside the video, you are in the right place. Today, we are gonna build this whole thing up from start to finish. I'm gonna show you all the steps and quirks along the way and hopefully you can learn something from it. So let's jump right into it. Grab yourself a beverage, get cozy. Let's check it out. All right, my friends. So let's jump right into our build here. Got to pop the box open and right off the bat, we're met with a whole bunch of sprues, all individually wrapped in plastic, which is nice. Protect those from getting all scratched up and stuff. So let's take those out of the bags. And of course, Tamiya, as they've been doing with some of their newer kits, includes a full color reference sheet for our marking options here. Two marking options with this kit. We're going to go with the A version. And unlike some of the older Tamiya kits, this is not a classic bathtub hull. This is actually built using um, a few different parts for the lower hull assembly. So we're going to pop those off the sprue and we're going to get going on the construction here. First things first, we're going to attach the floor of the fighting compartment to the very bottom section of the hull here. And then attach that back firewall of the fighting compartment. Next, we're going to attach the two side plates of our lower hull here. Um, two identical plates, one for each side. And you can see one of the advantages of going away from that bathtub hull is we can get a lot of really nice details molded right into these individual pieces. So without too much fuss, we've got the majority of our lower hull assembly put together. Next, we're gonna put on this back plate. This is the rear of the hull at this nice sharp angle here. That just pops right into place with no problem at all. And then we're gonna add a few pieces along the bottom of the hull here. There are, I believe, eight of these in total that we're going to have to add. These are going to be the mounting points for our torsion bars, as the Hellcat is a torsion bar suspension rather than the traditional American bogey setup that you see on M4 Shermans and most of the American tanks of the period. Here we're going to put on another eight pieces, um, four on each side. These are the bump stops for the torsion bars to make sure that those don't overextend as the vehicle is driving over rough terrain. Next, we're going to go ahead and start putting our actual torsion bars onto those mounting points we just added. The first step calls for these bigger pieces here. Um, we're going to put those on first. And as you can see, everything just pops right into place, no problem at all. The instructions are very clear. And of course, to me, engineering, these line up very nicely. So I didn't have any problems putting these on whatsoever. We're going to move on to the next step of assembling our suspension here. This is part five of the instruction manual if you're following along at home. So we've got a few more torsion bar arms to put on here, as well as the support structures for the idler wheel and the drive sprocket. We're going to repeat this process on both sides of the vehicle. Then we're going to move on to our return rollers. These are just basic two-part return rollers. If you've built a Tamiya kit before, a Tamiya armor kit, you know how these go together. So we're just going to pop four of those onto each side of the hull here. Of course, these are the support return rollers for the top run of the track length. A few details to attach to the rear of our hull here. This is the tow hook, just a basic two-part assembly, but really clever engineering nonetheless. And that's going to go in at kind of this funky angle on the back of the hull here. So we'll pop that in place, and then we're going to put our um, manual starter crank on here as well. You can see we've also put on the top of the pickaxe head and our rear tow hooks as well. Next, we're going to move on to our basic road wheel assembly. Again, if you've built a Tamiya armor kit before, you know these are pretty straightforward, just two piece assemblies. We're going to knock out eight of those for each side of the vehicle, well, four for each side. And then we're gonna move on to this really clever engineering for our drive sprockets. Um, these are gonna go in the front of the vehicle. And there's a few pieces that go into these. Again, we're talking um, step nine in our instruction manual here, if you're following along at home. Um, to me, it did a really good job with these because they line up in one specific way only to make sure that they fit together perfectly. You can see I kind of fiddle with them here a little bit until everything drops into place. We're gonna put a little bit of extra thin cement around the outside of that sprocket. And then again, we're just gonna find those lineup points, those marking points on the outside of the drive sprocket and put the actual teeth on there. 
You can see in this close-up just how well those fit into place. Really wasn't much cleanup required for this at all. And we're gonna repeat that for both sides of the drive sprocket. And of course, we're gonna do one of these for the left and right side of the vehicle. We're gonna do something very similar with our idler wheels for the rear of the tank destroyer. Uh, again, these slot into place. You can just kind of spin them in place there with a little Tamiya extra thin, and they're gonna pop right in as required. And then we have to add that outer rim to each of these as well. Again, really nice guide horns on here, so they only fit one way, and you'll know if everything is looking correct because everything will line up and fall right into place, no problem at all. We're gonna make one of those for each side of the vehicle. All right, now moving on to the first kind of major hurdle in this build here. As you can see, this is to me is kind of standard link and length track set up here. So instead of the rubber band tracks, we've got a bunch of individual links and lengths. The first thing we're going to do is put our bottom run on here, our bottom length. And there's a little pin that's going to line up on the bottom of the road wheel, one road wheel here to make sure that we're going the right way. So we've got that bottom run and then a medium run going up to the drive sprocket, six individual links wrapping around that, our top run, six links wrapping around the idler wheel, and then a middle joint again to tie us back into that lower run, as well as a few individual links to just make sure everything lines up perfectly. So we'll start with the bottom there and we're gonna pop that long run into position on the bottom of our road wheels and cement that in place. You'll notice that I've got a little give to the road wheels still. I'm gonna glue those in place after all of our tracks are on, um, just so we can have a little give if we need to make adjustments. So we've got that medium piece in place, and then we're gonna start wrapping our individual links around the drive sprocket. We can cement those into place as we go. And you can see here, the fit is very nice already. We're just gonna slowly work our way around that drive sprocket and get to the section where that'll connect to the top long run that's gonna rest along our return rollers. With that complete, we're gonna to shift to the rear of the vehicle and we're gonna repeat a very similar process. We'll put our single link in place here, our single link in place here, excuse me, and then add our medium size length to connect back to the return roller. We'll cement those in place. And then we'll start adding our individual links to wrap around that return roller. Excuse me, not return roller, our idler wheel in the rear of the vehicle there. Lots of wheels to talk about here, folks, so excuse me if I get a little confused. These Lincoln Lake tracks are a little more complicated than your standard rubber band track, of course, but it pays off in the details. These look fantastic. For our last step here, we're just going to pop that top run right in place on our return rollers. And as you can see, the fit is lovely. We're going to repeat that process for the other side of the tank as well. Excuse me, the other side of the tank destroyer as well. And you can see we've got a nice sturdy suspension in place here right off the bat in our build. This is gonna give us a wonderful base to build up from and we'll come back and paint all this up obviously later. I had considered not attaching these permanently but I couldn't really figure out a good way around it. So we're gonna put the tracks on there and just paint them on the vehicle. Next, we're gonna move up further on our hull here. Uh, we've got two side sponsons here that hold some sponson ammo racks. The instructions call for these to be painted up before we seal up the vehicle but You'll see later in the video, you can't really see them at all through the very cramped turret. So we're gonna put them in here and we're gonna paint them and take the turret off later. But we've got a nice little bit of detail. Again, you're not gonna be able to see much of this. So we are just gonna mount these on our sponsons and put those in place now. And we'll see if we can do a little detail painting later, just in case you can peer through the turret and see those. Now, the only difference between the A and B versions in this kit are these fender fronts here. This is the A fender front. If you were gonna do the B vehicle, you would have to choose a separate piece for this, but otherwise no difference between the two marking options in this kit. So we're gonna glue our two sponsons in place here with the Amorax on those. And that's gonna give us, you know, the bulk of our upper hull assembly that we can then attach and get on with the rest of the detailing. We've got two engine grill covers here to pop on the top of our hull. Again, this was a really rewarding part of the build. Tamiya really nailed the fit here. These dropped right into place and you almost didn't even need cement to hold them down. 
just add a couple little drops on the corners here and these stayed in place nicely. We've got some beautiful mold details. No need to accentuate those any further. Got some more ventilation features to pop on the front of the hull here. As well as a little bit of pioneering tool action to slide on the side of the hull as well. We've got the tripod mount for the Mod Deuce, as well as some of our pioneering tools that strap right there on the side of the hull. Next, we're gonna cement the two pieces of our hull together. You can see me fiddle with this a little bit just to make sure everything pops right into place, but once you get it, the fit is super snug. Again, you barely even really need cement to hold this thing together. The engineering is just so crisp. Um, and we're gonna sandwich the two pieces together there, add a little cement, and we're ready to rock and roll. We're starting to get the shape of our M18 visible here. I always love this part of the build because things are starting to come together and uh, gets really exciting. We're gonna add some of the details to the front of our hull here. We've got our two headlights as well as our siren assembly. We'll put those in place. Pretty standard to me. Uh, those haven't changed much over the years. And then we've got some basic two-part um, protector guards, um, brush protectors that are gonna fit over those headlights and the siren there. Um, super delicate parts here, so just go slow. Make sure you don't break anything when you're sanding them down and you can cement those in place. Next, we have the final drive cover. That's gonna be bolted on the front of the vehicle. Um, you just have to add a couple of tow hooks to that, a couple of lifting hooks to that rather, and that just cements right in place. We're gonna shift gears now up to our turret assembly. Um, if you're following along, this is part 19 in the instruction manual. And there's a bunch of individual parts, detail parts that are gonna have to be attached um, through steps 19 and 20 of the manual. Just interior details for the turret. You can glue all of those in place, cement all of those in place rather. And then in step 21 here, we're gonna attach the two sides of the turret to that lower portion of the turret. One thing to note here, I am gonna be using some aftermarket resin parts as mentioned in the beginning of this video. So we're gonna leave pieces E60 and E59 off the turret right now. Those are going to be replaced with aftermarket resin parts. Step 22 in the instructions here, we're going to add the mounting ring for the 50 cal that's going to go on the top of the turret here, as well as the rear cover of the turret there. It's going to cover up our radio and some of the other rear components of the turret. Next, we're going to move on to our ready rack for the 76 millimeter ammo that's going to go in the turret here. This is going to mount to the roof of the front of the turret. And there are some individual shells that we're gonna have to put in place here. Each one of those can be cut off the sprue and sanded down. And then we're gonna put all, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those in place right now, just like so. With that complete, we can cement those to the roof of the turret here. And that is very nicely going to pop right into place. You can see how easily that slides in there. You can add a few little dabs of cement and that will be secured nicely. Now for our raison d'etre here, we got to get the 76 millimeter gun in place. We're going to start working on our breech here. This is step 24 in the instruction manual. Just a few parts in this, but some beautiful detailing here by Tamiya. This thing looks great. Our breech block will slide right into place there to wrap up that step. And then we're going to need to add our recoil guards here for the crew. Uh, there are two pieces, one for either side of the breech, and we're going to pop those in place. There is also a back guard that is going to go in between here, though I did not include any footage of that. You'll see it in place in just a second, but it very nicely pops in between the two rear portions of those recoil arms there. All right, so now that our breech assembly is complete, we are gonna attach that to the gun mantlet. Um, you can see that the breech actually is at kind of a funky angle here, and that's because in the M18, they had to twist the gun a little bit to allow the loader to actually get shells into the chamber. It's a very cramped fighting compartment and this made things a little more ergonomic for the crew. So we're gonna slide that whole assembly into place and you'll note here on step 26 in the instructions, we are not gonna attach pieces A38 right now. We're gonna leave those off for a little while and you'll see why in just a bit. Moving down to step 27 in the manual, we're gonna add our 
rain guard here around the mantlet. It's just a few pieces that glue together. The fit is really nice. And once that's assembled separately from the turret, we can just pop that right into place. The fit is great and you shouldn't have any trouble with that at all. All right, onto our first upgrade here. I picked up a metal barrel from Death Model. This was made to exactly replicate the piece that comes with the kit. And when I can throw a metal barrel on one of my kits, I like to do it. It's a really nice touch and they look super crisp. So we're gonna pop that into place. And as mentioned, this is a one-to-one -one match for the actual part that comes with the kit. So it's gonna fit in there without too much trouble at all. And we can hold that in place with just a tiny dab of super glue. Can't use cement for this because obviously it's a metal piece. Onto our next upgrade, I've got some resin pieces from Steve over at Value Gear, and he just whipped up this set specifically for this Tamiya M18. So we're gonna add some really nice resin details on here to really spruce up our build. At this stage, I wanna pop those front um, storage bins on. These are the parts that we left off intentionally earlier, and we're gonna glue those right in place as the guide holes in the kit suggest. So just use a little bit of super glue and carefully pop those on as called for. Now you can see I've gone ahead and added some more of the resin bits. These are going to replace the actual stowage bins along the back part of the turret that we'll get to later in the instructions, but I'm just going to put those on now before we get into the turret basket or the half basket because I don't want to break any of those pieces. I was super impressed with this part. Um, Tamiya made this big, beautiful turret ring piece here all in one, one section. Really impressive molding there. And we're going to start putting some of the detail pieces on here. You can see we've attached the floor, the half floor for the gunner here. Some really nice guide marks to make sure that fits right into place. We've also attached the platform for the commander to stand if he's using the uh, 50 cal at the top of the turret. I've gone ahead and added a few more of the details here. These are all the firing controls for the gunner. He's also got that tractor seat in there. It's a really nice piece from Tamiya. There's also a seat for the loader over on the corner there of the turret ring. And as you can see, this is very nicely gonna pop into place. I'm just gonna gently dry fit it on the bottom of our turret and twist it until it falls right in where it's supposed to go. Once that's locked in, we can just add a little bit of extra thin cement and that's gonna hold that all in place nicely. As you can see here, our turret is getting real cramped real fast. I can't imagine what it would have been like to fight in one of these vehicles. There's just not a lot of room to maneuver in there, but you know what? You make up for it with some, some extra speed and a, a big old gun there. So we're gonna pop our turret on. You can see it moves nice and smoothly as you traverse around the vehicle. A couple of little hangups on the actual insertion points there, but that is no problem at all. Very, very impressed with the fit here. All those internal parts, they don't get hung up on anything at all, and it allows you to rotate the turret to any position you want to display it in. We're gonna move on to step 31 in the instructions here. Just got some grab handles that we need to attach to the top of our fighting compartment here. These would help if you had to put a cover over that open compartment or just for the crew to maneuver around the vehicle. At this point, I returned to an earlier instruction in the build. I left the hatches off for the driver and the co-driver positions in the beginning. I wasn't sure if I was going to position these open or closed, but after, you know, building a little bit further into the kit here, I realized there's not much detail. It's not really any detail at all within those compartments, and you can actually see in there pretty well. So I made the decision to build them closed up. Moving on, we've got a few more pioneering tools, barrel cleaning tools to attach here. We're going to cement those to the side of the hull. And now I've gone ahead and added a bunch more resin stowage here. These are all parts from Value Gear again. And I just went through my stash and super glued these in place as I wanted to add a little more character to the vehicle. If you have extra stowage bits around, now's a great time to put them on there so we can paint them all together with the vehicle later. If you haven't seen my other tutorial video on how to make scratch-built tarps, I'll include a link to that here. It's just something I like to do on my armor vehicles to add a nice little unique touch there. 
um, that's going to make your vehicle one of a kind because no one else is going to have the exact tarps that you do. So added a few around the vehicle here just to cover up some gaps in the stowage that I didn't really like. And then I came back and added some tie down straps for all of that stowage. In reality, anything that's attached to the tank or tank destroyer is going to need to be strapped on so it doesn't fall off. It's not just super glued on there. So we've added some tie downs throughout the build just to make things look extra realistic. Next, I sacrificed a brand new pack of guitar strings, which broke my heart, but that's okay. We can get more. Um, and we're going to use the E string here. If you're not familiar with guitars, this is the top string, the thickest string. And it also works out really well to replicate US antennas, or really any antennas. Um, the thickest string here has this wound coating that works really well to replicate the flex mount that the American tanks had. So we're going to trim this down to size as needed. And then we're going to cut back some of that wound part until we get just the amount of flex mount that we want. Once that's all done, we can just use the existing mounting post um, that comes with the kit for the antenna and just super glue that in place like so. And that is going to be it for this build, guys. That is our finished build of the brand new Tamiya 135 scale M18 Hellcat. I had an absolute blast with this build. And honestly, I know I said it in the beginning of this video, but I do think this is a contender for best 135 scale armor build on the market right now. Between the ease of construction and the absolute crazy level of detail on this thing, I it, it's got my vote. So don't take my word for it, guys. Go out and pick one up yourselves. You're not going to regret it. This was an awesome experience. And if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. The next thing I'm going to shoot is a full painting video for this kit, so you can get a little insight on how I paint this stuff up, including all the hand painting of all the stowage and everything on there. If you want to check out that video I mentioned of my full tutorial on how to make DIY tarps, I will leave a link to that right here. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.